Well, I just bought a second Lotto Tumbler, so I thought this was a good time to do a review. Uh, I've had my other Lotto Tumbler for over 10 years, and almost all the polished rocks you see on this uh, channel, the tumbled rocks at least, are done in that tumbler. So I have a pretty good idea how it works by this time. So this is a vibratory tumbler. If you don't know what a vibratory tumbler is, or what the difference between a vibratory and a rotary tumbler is, uh, I made another video to show you the difference there, just to keep this one a little bit shorter. So I'll put a link to that at the end of this video so you can check that out too. So here it is. Uh, took me a little while to find the directions. I thought they forgot to put them in here. Uh, the directions are in this little bag inside the barrel, and there's a little bit of grit in there, probably enough to get your first batch done, and, and that's about it. So uh, this is the machine. It's not ready to go as it is. It needs to be mounted to a concrete block. So the directions say that it needs to be a solid 40 pound concrete block. So I bought the kind that has the two holes in it, like a normal concrete block, and I had to fill in the holes. So I just put it down on a piece of plywood uh, and then filled it in with some, I just bought a bag of, of uh, cement, uh, filled it in and just scraped off the top with a, an old board to get it smooth. And then I painted the whole thing. Um, you have to paint it because on the bottom here, there's double-sided tape and it won't stick to just the plain concrete. So you have to paint at least the top, but I painted the whole thing because it looks nicer that way. So let's get that, uh, that big old block up here and I'll try not to hurt myself and then I'll, I'll mount this and show you how it works. I don't know how much this block weighs, but it's gotta be more than 40 pounds. Um, it's, it's really heavy. Um, the idea here is that this vibrates and if it's not on the block, it's just gonna move all over the floor and probably tear itself apart from all the vibrations. So you want to mount it on something very solid. You could also mount it directly to the floor if you wanted to. Um, I, I like to be able to move it once in a while if I want, so that's why I put it on a block. A friend of mine mounted his on a stack of blocks. So he's got it way up high so he doesn't have to bend over every time he uses it. Mine's way down on the floor when I'm using it, so I have to get down on my knees and work on it there. I don't mind, but uh, just an idea if you want to get it up higher, you could do that. So, uh, let's get this thing mounted. I made some little marks on there so I get it kind of centered. I can get these off of here. This makes for exciting video. All right, so here's how this works. Uh, I'll first have to take these little pieces of cardboard out, I guess, for shipping. All right, so this is the barrel that comes out. Uh, the older barrels had a little dimple in the bottom that you kind of had to fill in with epoxy or something because stuff would get stuck down in there. Uh, the newer ones, that, that little hole in there is filled in a little better, so it's not a problem. Uh, it has springs down here, so this thing's kind of can move around a little bit. So these are the springs. Uh, all these parts are replaceable, by the way. You can get new springs and new fans and different things. Uh, these are fans on here, so when this is running, these spin really fast. And there's little weights on here somewhere. I can't see them right now. I guess they're on the inside. Uh, but there's little weights on there, so as this spins around, the weights are both on the same side, and it just shakes the machine. So although the barrel doesn't turn like a, a rotary barrel does, uh, inside you'll see the rocks churning around in there, and they, they move, even though the barrel doesn't turn itself. Speaking of the barrel, the top of the barrel here is two and a quarter inches wide, uh, so that limits the size of rocks you can put in there. Uh, there are other vibratory tumblers that have a, a much wider barrel, so you can put a bigger rock in there. So uh, it's one of the downsides to this, although most of the time I'm running smaller rocks anyhow, so it's not a big deal. Uh, here's a kind of flat rock, and that's, that's about the limit of how big you can put in there. Uh, I have put in a little bit bigger rocks that are kind of flat like this because this is rubber, so you can kind of squeeze it a little bit and get them in there. Uh, it's a little hard to get them out, but uh, you know, if you work at it, you can get them out. Uh, here's a rock that's not going to fit in there, um, and you can't squeeze it to get that one in there. I might be able to jam it in, but I don't know how I'd ever get it out again. But uh, that's too big, just so you kind of have an idea of that. Uh, I think that's all I need to say about that. Uh, you're probably wondering about the sound. Uh, rock tumblers do make noise, and uh, this one is no exception. It makes some noise. Uh, it's more of a hum than the bigger, the rotary tumblers. So here's a 12-pound rotary barrel. 
Uh, when I first put this in my basement, uh, I had a small, smaller barrels before, little three pound barrels. Couldn't really hear those upstairs. My ceiling here is not insulated. When I put this on the, in the basement and it turns, you can hear that thumping of the rocks and you could hear it upstairs. It wasn't terrible, but it was definitely noticeable, especially if everything was turned off. If you had the TV on or the refrigerators running, you didn't hear it so much, but uh, made some noise. This is a more steady hum. So it, it doesn't make that thumping noise, it's just a nice hum. Uh, I will say that the, my motor, after 10 years, it burnt out and I had to get a new motor on my other one. Um, as the motor got older, the bearings were going bad. I didn't realize that at first, but it went from a hum to more of a buzz. Um, so it wasn't necessarily louder, but it was a less pleasant sound, let's say. And it was, it was a little bit louder too. So um, yeah, I did have to replace that, but that was after 10 years of quite a bit of use. Um, Speaking of replacing stuff, I also had to replace the barrel on my other one because it got too thin from the inside and it squished too much and it would slip right down and bottom out down here. Um, you don't want this all the way down to the bottom. You just put it in there so it's kind of snug. Uh, but if, if you find that your rocks aren't tumbling well, uh, you might have the barrel in there too far. Um, I did just talk to somebody recently who had a barrel I don't know if it was a frame or the barrel or what, but his barrel right from new was slipping down in there and he jammed a piece of cardboard or a piece of wood like in between here and it, it worked much better. So uh, let's, uh, let's do a little sound demonstration for you so you can hear what it sounds like. I'm going to use my old one since it's all set up and it's full of rocks. Uh, so we'll listen to that now. This is my old tumbler. Uh, there's a power strip back behind the block here. Uh, these don't actually come with a switch, which most tumblers don't. Um, I know my National Geographic is the only tumbler that has uh, a power switch. Uh, this is underneath the stairs that go up to my garage from my basement. So we're in a confined little area here, so it's, it's going to be a little bit echoey. So it might actually sound louder to hear down here than it would normally. So here goes. If you take the top off, it's quite a bit louder. So it's just sort of a hum. You might be wondering about how much power this thing uses. A while back I did a video comparing all my different tumblers. I bought a little gizmo that measured power consumption. And this one was near the upper end. This uses about 95 watts of power, a little bit less. Uh, and at my house that's about $9 a month. So if you're running it continuously, uh, it's going to be about the same as running a 100 watt light bulb continuously all month long. So uh, let's put some rocks in this thing and try it out. Okay, we're over here at the sink and I just want to show you the bottom of this barrel has got this little knob sticking out which makes it kind of hard to balance it. So I've cut a piece of PVC pipe as a base for it. You can also use an empty tumbler barrel, uh, like a rotary tumbler barrel. Uh, works really well with the lid off, you can just set it on there. Uh, this is not my new barrel, by the way. This is an old barrel that I'm going to turn into a coarse barrel. And my new barrel is going to be my polished barrel. It's nice uh, if you can afford it to get a second barrel just for the polish stage. Uh, that way you don't have any grit or anything stuck in there and it's going to give it a better polish. Another thing you might want to get is a canning funnel because these fit in here just perfectly. And you might have noticed I've already put some water in there. Uh, that's so when you're dropping the rocks in, it's a little more gentle on them. And you need to get the rocks wet anyhow, so I just put the water in ahead of time. So here's what I'm going to be tumbling. I've got these five little crosses. And by the way, this is the reason that I bought a new lotto tumbler, a second lotto tumbler. Uh, I'm doing a lot of these lately. Uh, I did Christmas ornaments. Uh, if you see my little turtles that I make, the bottoms of the turtles go in the tumbler. And it seems like I'm always running this stuff and I don't have time to run my regular rocks. So this is Serape Jasper that I've, I've already rotary tumbled this and it's been done through the rotary tumbler, tumbler stage for probably a year. It's been sitting in the cupboard and I just haven't gotten around to, to tumbling it yet. So uh, like I said, that's why I got the second, second barrel or the second tumbler. So this is uh, how I usually use this. I, I do the rocks in the rotary tumbler and I get them all nice and smooth, get all the little holes out of them, and then they go into here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of separate these. I'm going to put in a cross and a few of these, and then another cross, 
Uh, the reason I'm separating them, this isn't critical, but if, if you've got, if you have too many flat things in there, especially if they're the same shape, these crosses will align themselves perfectly in there and they'll get stuck together and they'll just stay like that in the barrel. Um, so if you're ever doing just shapes like this, you want to use a lot of ceramics. Like I'd say 50% ceramics at least in the barrel. Uh, like I said, with just a few it probably doesn't matter too much that I'm separating them. All right, and there's the rest of them. So you can kind of see how full I've got the barrel. It's down there, I don't know, several inches. Uh, what you want is about 30% ceramics for a normal batch of these things. So I've got ceramics here. By the way, you can't use plastic in this. Plastic's too light and it'll just come right up to the top. Uh, since the barrel's not rolling around like a rotary tumbler does. So I'm going to put ceramics in here with them. Uh, I always use ceramics in these batches. I, I, I can't imagine using this without it. Um, these have already been tumbled. Uh, when I first get new ceramics, I run them through the tumbler in 220 grit. I usually go a day or two in the vibratory tumbler, and that just knocks off the sharp edges. In fact, some of these, I think that's all that's been done to them. And then some other ones are much more worn. Uh, but anyhow, run them through your tumbler a little bit first just so they're not scratching up your rocks. These are very hard. So we'll just dump some of those in. So keep in mind these are going to fill in the little holes between the rocks. That's kind of the purpose of them. But if you shake it down a little bit, you want it kind of like that. So we're down maybe an inch. Uh, from the top here and you want a little bit of room. You don't need a lot of room and sometimes I fill it up more than this But if you have a big rock in there and you have it too full a big rock will come up and push the lid of the tumbler right off And then your rocks all dry out. So I like to keep it down there a little ways so that uh, so that doesn't happen So then what I'm going to do is just put my hand over top of the tumbler and just leave a little space between my fingers so the water can come out and going to drain out as much water as I can. So what you want is the rocks to be wet, but no standing water on the bottom. All right, so those are, like I said, wet, but no, no water on the bottom of the tumbler anymore. All right, so uh, now let's take this over to the tumbler itself and we'll get them running. So one thing you want to do is dry off the barrel really carefully. Uh, I've got a little rust right along here on my other barrel and a little bit on the sides here, wherever it touches, uh, because I wasn't careful to dry it off every time. You're going to push that in, just, just snug. You don't have to push it way down. And then uh, I should mention before I get started with the recipe here that this recipe is not exactly what they tell you to do in the Lotto instruction book. It's not far off, but I got this through the Rock Tumbling Hobby forums, uh, which I'm a member of. Uh, and if you're not at the Rock Tumbling Hobby forums, I suggest go check it out. There's a lot of good stuff there. That's where I learned everything I know. So I got the recipe there and then uh, with other members tweaked it over the years. And so I've got it kind of where I want it right now. So what we're going to do is plug it in. And stuff will start moving in there. And then there's these little fans here. So whenever I put the grid in, I like to protect my eyes from that. Uh, I'm using 220 silicon carbide. You can also use 120, 220. But I always kind of shield my eyes like this and just dump that in there. Then we're going to put in two tablespoons of this. And I gotta say, that's not moving exactly like my other one did. So we'll have to see what that does overnight. That's starting to move a little bit, but um, I would say that's a more gentle action than my other tumbler. So, put the lid on. And then I always put some rubber bands over the top. So there's that little knob I showed you on the bottom here. I'm just gonna wrap the rubber bands around and then just hook it on there. That way, if a rock does push up on it, uh, it shouldn't cause too much of a problem. Once in a while, I'll still knock it loose. So I'm going to leave that on there for two days, and then we'll come back and check on it. Actually, I'll be checking on it before I go to bed tonight, and then 
tomorrow I'll, I'll check on it about three times during the day and give it a little squirts of water as needed. So it's the next morning. I did give it a couple little squirts last night, but nothing much is happening in there, so I didn't show you that. But I am not happy with the way things are moving in there. Those rocks should be kind of rotating around. Uh, let me show you the other tumbler that I've got running, my old one, to show you the difference. Okay, so this is one of the negatives I'm going to say about this machine, is that the last few years, it seems like they haven't been adjusted quite as well coming from the factory. So here's the springs, the spring here, spring here, and then there's a dowel that goes underneath, and that dowel can be moved back and forth. It's just hot glued in place, um, and if you move it back and forth, it adjusts how, how much motion there is on the inside. So you measure, I'm looking at that little bolt on the left there, and it looks like it's about, to that mark on the dowel, about 3.3 centimeters, somewhere around there, and to that other bolt, it's about 3, so it's, it's pretty much in the middle right there. Let's go look at my other tumbler. Let's just take a look, and if you look here, it's about two centimeters from that bolt and it's a let's see if we move this over it's over four centimeters from the other one so it's much farther to the left so I'm gonna go to my other tumbler I'm gonna pick off the hot glue and see if I can move that to the left and see if it changes the action inside this is something I've never done before so uh, let's hope it works well I just picked the glue off and I'm not super happy because there's a little brad in the top of each of these um, so these are nailed down. So I think what I'm going to do now is take out all these screws. There's four of them. Take the whole thing off and see if I can get that uh, those brads out of there. Get that dowel loose so I can move it. You can see it's been marked here. So it's it seems to me like they're not adjusting these, uh, like tuning them at the factory anymore. It looks more like they've just drawn a line on there, you know, measured from the end or something, and put it in one spot. I've heard more and more reports of these coming untuned like this one is, so it's kind of disappointing because uh, if you didn't know any better, you you know, if you hadn't watched a, a video of somebody else's or seen another one in action, you wouldn't know that the action inside the barrel is supposed to be different than it is. So anyhow, I'm going to go get a wrench and see if I can get those things off of there and hopefully put this back together right. Alright, so I've got this all uh, put back together. Um, I just, like I said, took out these four screws. If you're on the other side, you can't see. Uh, the dowel, I end up using a vice grips to pull it off and kind of crush the end, so I replaced it with a new dowel. Happen to have one around. The measurement from here to here is two centimeters. Let me show you. So, that's the way my other one is. And Look at the difference in the action now. That's what it should look like. So if you buy one of these and, and you know give it a chance, make sure you know how to use it first. But if you've got all the water poured out of it, and so it's just wet rocks, and then you put your grid in, it should be moving about like that. That looks really good now. So we'll check back on this in a little bit and uh, add some water later today. That's the next day now, I came down to check it, and I forgot to mention something about the sound. Even though this is on a block, I can feel the vibration in this really heavy concrete block. So what really helps the sound is if you take a towel and you put it underneath. And that takes away almost all the sound. Alright, so let's see how it's looking inside. And that's too dry. You can see it's not moving very much. It's starting to look a little more dry. Uh, the slurry's building up a little more. So you just give it a couple squirts from a squirt bottle. And then it's really important to wait. If you squirt too much too fast, it's easy to overdo it. So let it kind of get mixed up in there a little bit and then squirt a little bit more. And I'm squirting a few squirts at a time, but it kind of depends on your squirt bottle. So if your squirt bottle squirts out a lot more water, of course, you got to be a little more careful. 
So it's starting to move a little bit better, but it's really important just to take it slow. It's easier to put water in than take it out. That's looking pretty good. I think I'll just give it another couple of squirts to just make it keep going through the day. And that should be good. You can see there's a bigger rock kind of getting hung up in there a little bit. So those eventually work their way by and everything starts moving again. All right, this has been going for a full two days now. So I'm gonna add in a little bit of water and I just pour it in until it kind of slows down. And then I'm gonna use some fish detergent. I'll just put a little squirt in there. Then I'll come back in about 15 minutes and rinse them off. All right, so these are all rinsed off, and this is something that's optional. Uh, most people call this a burnish stage. I just call it washing the rocks. Uh, I'm gonna start this thing up and add a little bit of water. And I just add it until they kind of slow down a little bit, kind of like that. And then you can either use like a tablespoon of borax, or most of the time I just use a little bit of dish detergent. And I'm going to let that run for a half an hour or an hour. And all I'm doing is trying to get all the grit off. So I, I've rinsed it really carefully and then this is just an extra rinse stage. So we'll do this, then we'll rinse them off again, and then we'll, we'll put in the grit for the next stage. Well, these have been washing for about an hour now. And I just wanted you to see how dirty the water comes out. It's not a good idea to put this stuff down in your sink, but for the sake of the video, I'll show you. So all that was still in there, even though I rinsed it more than what I showed you on camera. So I'll rinse these out a little more. See the dirt that's coming out of there? And then we'll put them in for the second stage. So we're gonna start the second stage now. I'm going to start out by putting in a tablespoon of borax. And then this is where I like to use aluminum oxide. So I don't, I start out with silicon carbide and switch into aluminum oxide because this is better at polishing. And I'm putting in a half teaspoon. And we're gonna let that run for three days. Now it's been three days, so let's take a look at it. I've added water once in the past three days. And it's actually looking a little bit dry right now. If I was going to run it longer, I'd give it another squirt of water. Doesn't look too bad, though. Give it a squirt of dish detergent. Then I'll just add water in until it slows down a little bit. See how the motion slowed in there? I'm gonna do the burnishing step again to wash these rocks really well. And I think this is the most important time to do it is just before you put them into the polish stage. So we'll start this up. I'm gonna use borax this time just to show you that either one works. So last time I used dish detergent. I don't notice a difference between the two. 
both of them end up giving you dirty water, so I think they're both cleaning the rocks. And then just like I did a minute ago, add a little bit of water. And I'm just going to let them run like that for about an hour, and then we'll come back and rinse them out again and start the polish stage. I just got done rinsing these after an hour of burnishing and I pulled out one rock just to show you how they're coming along. This is completely dry and it already has a really good shine. I'm hoping we can take it up just one more little notch, uh, but it's not going to look a whole lot different than this after two more days and the polish that we're about to start. So this is the time uh, to use your polish barrel if you have one. Um, I probably shouldn't have capitalized that because it looks like it says Polish, but that's polish, trust me. Uh, so what we're going to do here is put in some borax. Now I, I said a minute ago that it, you don't have to use borax in that burnishing stage, but when you're doing the 500 or the polish stage and you're adding something in, you do want to use borax. That two crosses stuck together. So this is borax. And then this is aluminum oxide polish, which is, I think this is this one's from the Rock Shed, but I've also used stuff from Kingsley North. I think they're both two micron, so it's very fine polish. That's gonna be over 10,000 grit. Some companies sell what they call polish, but it's like 1,200 grit. So this is much, much finer than that. That 500 would have broken down into probably finer than 1200 grit after three days. So there we go. Just check in on that in two days. I will be checking it to see if it needs a little squirt of water along the way. Probably just once a day. Uh, but in two days, we'll open it up and take a look at it. They've been in the polish for two days, so let's see how they're looking. Uh, slightly dry in there, not too bad. I added water once yesterday, that was the only time. So I'm going to rinse these off. Come back in a few minutes and uh, give a good rinse and we'll take a look at them. these a couple more times and then I'm going to put them back in the barrel for a little burnish run for about an hour and then we'll take a look at them. This is just in case there's any cracks in the rocks that'll hopefully wash the polish out of them. Got these all rinsed and dried off now so you can kind of get an idea of the type of polish you can get from this machine. Of course, this assumes that you're tumbling, you know, quality rocks. Can't just put anything in here and expect them all to turn out nice. Uh, but if you've got fairly hard rocks, these are like seven on the Mohs scale of mineral hardness. Uh, you can expect to get a good shine out of them. I'm not going to show you all these right now. Uh, I'll link to a video at the end, and you can see all these up close if you'd like to. But I wanted to show you softer rocks. So this is a Petoskey stone. It's only like three on the Mohs scale, so it's very soft, very hard to tumble. Uh, I used a different recipe for this. Uh, it's a dry corn cob media, so it's just dry corn cob, the rock, and or rocks, and whatever grit you're using or polish. So there's no water added at all. So I'll have a link to that in the description of this video if you're interested in seeing that. So there are other ways to use this machine, but what I did for these is what I do for most rocks that I tumble. There's one other thing you should know about this tumbler. It also comes in a two barrel model. The two barrels just sit side by side here. Uh, I have not wanted a second barrel up until just recently. The way I tumble rocks, I spend a long time in the first stage just getting them all rounded and shaped nicely before they ever go into the lotto tumbler. Uh, so those rocks that I showed you earlier, those probably spent at least two months, probably closer to three months in just the first stage before they went into here. 
So since it takes me so long to get enough rocks just to fill this thing up, uh, I haven't needed a second barrel. And if you do get a second barrel, you have to have both of them full. Uh, so you could put ceramics or uh, just any old rocks in the second barrel, something you're not even trying to polish just to have the weight in there and run it that way. Uh, but just think before you buy one with two barrels. I'm all for buying two barrel rotary tumblers, but not necessarily vibratory tumblers. So uh, pros and cons. First, the pros. This thing is super fast. It doesn't use very much grit at all. Um, I think it's really easy to get a really good finish with this machine. So the rocks come out of here just super shiny. Uh, also, there's this worldwide rock tumbling contest. I have a trophy. I won it in 2016. Uh, I used this machine to win that contest. And for like the last 10 or 15 years, I think most of the people winning that contest have used uh, a lotto tumbler. Last year was won by somebody using a UV10 tumbler. Uh, the other thing the winners have in common is they're all members of the Rock Tumbling Hobby Forums. So uh, check that out. I'll put a link in the description if you don't know what that is. But great place to learn about rock tumbling and all kinds of other lapidary stuff. That's where I learned almost everything I know. Uh, so in the con list, uh, first off, the biggest thing is the quality control. I had to move this little dowel. Um, I heard about one guy who had the, the tumbler barrel need to be replaced because it was slipping through. He had to wedge that thing in there like I told you before. Um, so the, the dowel you can fix, that wasn't that big. It took me 15 minutes to fix it. Uh, it wasn't that big of a deal, but I just think the quality control seems to be going down a little bit just based on what I've read in forums and things. Uh, the other thing is the hole in this is sort of small. So if you want to do larger rocks than two and a quarter inches, uh, this might not be the machine for you. And uh, I don't know if this is a con or not, but I did have to replace the motor and the barrel after about 10 years. Uh, the fact that it took 10 years before I had to do that tells me maybe that's a pro rather than a con. So I'll put it in the con list, but on the other side, the parts are available. So when you go to replace something, you can get almost all these parts. You can buy just the lid if you want to. You can buy a barrel, you can buy the fans. Um, everything's available separately. So it's, it's nice in that way that if you do have a problem, you can get parts for it. So... I, I give this thing a huge thumbs up. Uh, I had a lot of options I could have taken for my second tumbler, uh, but I bought another Lotto tumbler. So uh, obviously I like it a lot. And I think you will too. So don't forget to watch my other video on the comparison between a rotary tumbler and a vibratory tumbler. And I'll also link a video of the finished rocks that came out of this that I showed you earlier. And I'll have a video on how to use this tumbler to do the Petoskey stones with a dry corn cob. So click on one of those and I'll see you over there.